This Good Morning Northwest Morning Sprint is brought to you by Bill's Heating and Air Conditioning. All right, just about 6.53. Let's get you up to speed on everything you need to know here on your Wednesday in the Morning Sprint. Destiny Richards is live with how an upcoming vote by the school board will be instrumental in the future of Spokane Public Schools music program. Sydney Charles has the latest details on the trial of Idaho doomsday mom Lori Vallow. And you'll need a light jacket today. Mark Peterson is here to tell you why. But first, breaking news overnight on a stabbing on the Monroe Street Bridge. Three teenagers were arrested around 11 o'clock last night for stabbing a man and stealing from him. Those teens have been charged with first degree robbery. That's the charge someone receives when they're armed with a weapon or inflict bodily injury on a victim while robbing them. That man was taken to the hospital with non-life threatening injuries. And we're hoping to learn the identity of the man, minor killed in Idaho's Silver Valley yesterday during an accident at the Galena Mine. Investigators were at the mine last night trying to figure out exactly how an employee was killed on the job. The owners of the mine, America's Gold and Silver, say the miner died when struck by falling ground. Now, this is a developing story. We will continue to follow the very latest and let you know as soon as we learn more. Also today, we expect to learn the name of a person found dead in an irrigation canal south of Efreda. Grand County Sheriff's deputies say there is no obvious sign of foul play. They know the identity of the person and say they will release the name later today. And the trial of the Idaho doomsday mom, Lori Vallow, who's accused of killing two of her own children, continues today in Boise. We're expecting the defense to resume cross-examination of the lead detective on this case, who found the bodies of Vallow's two children buried in a yard belonging to Chad Daybell. In yesterday's hearing, prosecutors suggested a possible motive, showed graphic photos, and described a complicated plot to cast out evil spirits. Jurors also saw photos of the crime scene. Vallow and Daybell are also being charged with the death of Dable's previous wife, Tammy Dable. Ballow and Dable have both pleaded not guilty, but they're being tried separately. A trial date has not yet been set for Dable. In our first alert weather, it is a cold start to the day. We are going to see increasing clouds later on. Expecting to see some afternoon showers. Could be grapple, could be some light snow, maybe even a little light rain. That's going to happen about 3 o'clock this afternoon. Our temperatures are going to continue to be on the cool side. Uh, anywhere from 6 to 10 degrees below average. Uh, 50 into Coeur d'Alene. We'll see 49 here in Spokane. We look at how we're going to get there. Uh, we're going to start off in the low or into the 20s, warming through the 30s into the 40s by this afternoon. Plenty of sunshine. The clouds come in and again, those scattered showers for this afternoon. Well, Washington State Patrol needs your help finding two teenage girls who may be in danger. Ayanna Lewis and Charlotte Jurassic walked away from the Healing Lodge of the Seven Nations on Friday. They took their belongings and ran from the addiction center. Police say they may be re or frequenting homeless camps or shelters in the area. If you've seen Ayanna or Charlotte, you're asked to call Crime Check at 509-456-2233. Law enforcement here in Washington could get more freedom to chase suspected criminals. Right now, police need probable cause to start a pursuit, but a new bill that just passed the state house would change that requirement to reasonable suspicion. Now, reasonable suspicion is when an officer believes a crime is happening, whereas probable cause is when officers have a clear reason to believe crime is taking place. This bill allows police to pursue a suspect because of reasonable suspicion, but only if they believe that a DUI or violent or sexual offense is taking place. And this morning we've been talking about the Spokane Public Schools Board considering a $700,000 budget for new instruments at South Spokane Middle Schools and the new Peppers Act Middle School. This is because sixth graders are going to be moving up into band and orchestra classes at the middle school level and they need those new instruments for that growth in students. Another bit of uh, agenda item that is happening this evening that's been considered, excuse me, is the downtown stadium name. These are the options here. A lot of details went into why these proposals were chosen for the stadium name, the sponsorship, as well as the field name. You can find full details on KXLY.com. Several Democratic governors are now working to stockpile abortion drugs as legal disputes surrounding the abortion pill Mifepristone escalate. Washington Governor Jay Inslee purchased a three-year supply of the drug. Now governors from California, Massachusetts, and New York are following suit, announcing their states will also be stockpiling abortion or abortion aiding drugs. And because of this, the clock is ticking for Mifepristone. That federal judge in Texas who suspended the approval of the drug, which will essentially make the sale of the pill illegal while the challenge moves 
moves through the legal system. But dozens of officials from biotech and pharmaceutical companies signed an open letter backing the FDA's right to, quote, regulate safe, effective medicines for every American. We'll be right back.